Hi, I'm Wolf. Uh, I'm the tech lead for developer relations for machine learning at Google, which includes the Brain Team. The Brain Team's big project is TensorFlow, which is an open source library that lets you, uh, that builds computational, computational graphs and is used for machine learning, uh, especially deep learning. It's free, it's open source, you can download it now. I strongly recommend it. Uh, but I'm not going to teach you to use TensorFlow in five minutes. So let's talk instead about why you'd want to use machine learning in your games, besides that wonderful talk that we just had. Let me give you five things you can do with machine learning to your game right now, from easiest to hardest. Step zero, we're all engineers. Well, lots of us are. So we're going to start with zero. Uh, use analytics to predict stuff. So uh, modern games can produce all kinds of interesting data. And if you're smart, you're probably collecting some. Uh, uh, things you can do are like, how much is this player likely to spend? Is this player likely to quit? Is this player cheating? Is this player being toxic? These are all things you can find out. This is super basic stuff that you can do with TensorFlow or any other toolkit. And it doesn't even have to be complicated. A simple linear regression or linear classifier can help you get a boost uh, and understand your audience better. Step one, a little bit harder. Let's grab some open source models, deep models, and retrain them to be useful to your game. So Inception is an award-winning, uh, well, we have awards, uh, deep network that does image classification. Because of the contest data, it's kind of obsessed with dog breeds. But <laughs> it's really easy to retrain that and classify images with actually a fairly small amount of data right? deep learning standards just on your laptop. We have code labs. We have samples, all kinds of stuff. Think about the player activity you want to see. Think about hand gestures in front of cameras. Think about all kinds of stuff. Uh, grab some image data and get classifying. And if you don't like image processing, we have other open source models to play with. Parsi McParseface. That is its real name. Parsing McParseface explains the functional role of each word in a sentence, which includes, uh, which uh, gives you the ability to find uh, meaning from words and speech and text. Uh, super neat. You should totally check it out. All right, a little bit harder than retraining. You can use neural networks to give your uh, game art some style. Uh, in neural style transfer, you're taking advantage of deep neural network semantic understanding of a picture as well as uh, both the scene and the style. So you can apply the style of one image to the semantic scene data of the other. So in this case, we have creepy clown image and we have a beautiful seaside town. Uh, with style transfer, you can uh, then apply creepy clown style to seaside town. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can do that with all kinds of stuff. Again, there's open source models. There's open source examples to do this. Uh, think how much fun your artists are going to have coming up with all different ways to blend pictures that they've drawn with uh, art in 2D and 3D models within your game. Um, and if you have a good GPU, you can actually do style transfer in real time. This dog, Peekaboo, is getting uh, style transferred uh, at very amounts by different amounts of uh, 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 different amounts with using the sliders. Now we're getting fun. So step three is dream up new content for your game using deep learning. Um, most people have probably run into these weird recursive uh, dream models which come from sort of running an image recognition model backwards. But unless your game is entirely on acid, you're probably going to need something a little bit more practical. Uh, one example is actually uh, from the community. It's a web engineer in Japan uh, wanted to learn ML and TensorFlow as his personal hobby. So in a few months, he was able to build a deep convolutional generative ad adversarial network to generate arbitrary TV pop star faces uh, based on a database of other pop stars. Um, uh, another totally awesome, re awesome research using adversarial networks is downsampling photos of people and then learning the map mappings between the low resolution photos and the high resolution photos. So then you can edit in low resolution and generate high resolution photos. So in this image, uh, ground truth is on the left. In the middle, you have, uh, you have the low resolution version. And on the right, you have the generated image based on that low resolution image. If you've got pixel artists, they're going to have a lot of fun with this. No time to explain this at all, but it's another adversarial model that lets you do neural editing of faces. Uh, quickly transform a brunette to a blonde or male to a female with just a few pixels. There's a link there. Check it out. It's totally cool deep learning research. Um, and again, if images aren't your, uh, aren't your bag, you can do music. Uh, Google has a project Magenta, which is an open source project that uses ML that takes the problem of given n minus 1 notes, what is the nth note? Um, you can train it on all kinds of music from Radiohead to Bach and use a recurrent neural network to generate new music for your, for your game. And finally, step four, 
NPC control. This is kind of the elephant in the room, if you think about it. Um, there's obviously been a lot of super interesting work from our neighbors in London at DeepMind uh, on AlphaGo. There's some recent uh, good successes with poker. Uh, I just read a paper about using reinforcement learning to play Super Smash Brothers. Totally cool stuff. Uh, one note of caution, I think it's absolutely fascinating research, uh, but you'll, uh, at least in the experiences that I've had with it, the danger is that cameras and gameplay kind of work against you. Uh, that kid in a blue hat, he has no idea how complicated the neural networks of the kids around him are. Just zero idea. He has got his head down, he's focused on hopping. You're going to find that when you start applying deep learning to NPC control. Um, yet, super excited about this anyway. Um, there's going to be a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, you know, learning animation, animation parameters from video data. Uh, there's interesting work going on here. Uh, player dropout and takeover. If you have players playing some online game and they disappear, wouldn't it be neat to replace with a copy of them that's learned from their behavior? Uh, sidekicks, dialogue generation. You know, we're generating music in the previous example. There's no reason why you couldn't apply that to dialogue, although obviously it's a lot more semantically complicated. Um, custom content generation for opponents and levels and stories. The world is your oyster. And speaking of oysters, here's where we have ours. Uh, tensorflow.org is where you can find tutorials and code and the TensorFlow framework for doing deep learning. We have a Udacity course. Uh, I strongly recommend the Stanford, if you're interested in this, the Stanford CS231 uh, class on GitHub. They have an amazing introduction to how machine learning works. Um, and uh, we also just have a video series that introduces the basic concepts of machine learning. And there we are. Thank you very much. Yeah.